Hi there. Now in this tutorial, what I want to show you is how we apply the work energy principle. That is the change in the total energy of a particle is equal to the work done on the particle. And to illustrate this, I've got a typical example where we've got a skier going down a rough undulating slope. I'll take you through the question and the method involved first of all. So we've got a sketch here where we've got this skier passes through this point A on a ski run moving downhill at 5 meters per second. And after descending 60 meters vertically, the run begins to ascend. And when the skier has ascended 35 meters to a point B, his speed is 3 meters per second. And if the skier and his skis are treated as a particle with a mass of 65 kilograms, and the total distance traveled by the skier is 1,500 meters, then assuming that the non-gravitational resistances to motion are constant and have a magnitude of 13 newtons, we're asked to calculate the work done by the skier. Now the method we're going to use for a problem like this is to first of all look at what the loss in kinetic energy is. Okay, and then we're going to look at the loss in gravitational potential energy. And then by adding these two together, we can work out what the loss in mechanical energy is. Okay, now because the slope here is rough, we can expect then there to be work done against resistance. So what I do is work out the work done against resistance. And I would expect this to be higher than what we've got here is in the total of this loss in mechanical energy. And that's why the skier has to input energy or input work in order to correct for this imbalance, this deficit if you like. So we're going to then go on to work out the work done by the skier as being the work done by the resistance minus the loss in mechanical energy. It's the skier's input then that is given by this equation here. Okay, so we start off then by working out what the loss in kinetic energy is. And that's going to be the kinetic energy at A minus the kinetic energy at B. So knowing that kinetic energy is a half mv squared, then the kinetic energy at the start at A is going to be half times the mass, which is 65 times v squared. So that's going to be 5 squared. And then from this, we subtract the kinetic energy at B, which again will be a half m, half times 65 for the mass, times v squared. So we got 3 squared there. Okay, work this out and you end up with 520. And remember, work done, energy, it's measured in joules. So we've got 520 joules there. Now, when it comes to the loss in gravitational potential energy, then we need to work out what the gravitational potential energy is at A minus the gravitational potential energy at B. And I need to set up a zero level of gravitational potential energy. So I'll set it up at this lowest point here on the ground. So we'll just say that that is the point where GPE, gravitational potential energy, is zero. So for gravitational potential energy, remember it's mgh, so we've got at A, it's going to be the mass, 65, times g, times the height, which is 60 meters, so we've got 60 there. And from this, we take away the gravitational potential energy at B, which will be m times g, so 65g times h, which is 35. And then work that out, and you find that you get 15,000 
925 and that would be measured in joules. You could have also just done this sum here as for instance the loss in gravitational potential energy would just be the mass 65 times the acceleration due to gravity g times the distance between 60 and 35 just in other words 25 60 g times 25 it would have given you that same answer okay so now we've just got to work out the loss in mechanical energy which is going to be the loss in kinetic energy plus the loss in the gravitational potential energy so if i just replace that then with the values that we've got that is going to be 520 plus 15,925 and if you total that you end up with 16,445 joules okay so that's our loss in mechanical energy now because this slope is rough we need to work out the work done against resistance and just as a sketch with this particle here, let's just put the skier, we'll treat it him as a particle. And we'll take this general position here. Remember, what we've got here is the weight of the skier, acts downwards, that's going to be 65 G Newtons. There's going to be a contact force, which is going to act perpendicularly to the surface. We'll call that R Newtons, okay? Now, the resistance is 13 newtons, we're told here. It's a constant value. And it's going to act always perpendicularly to this normal reaction here. And it's going to act parallel to the tangent at this point of contact on the curve. So that's going to be 13 newtons, and it's going to stay constant, okay? So... When it comes to working out the work done against resistance, then this is going to be the force of 13 newtons times the distance, which is the distance of this slope. We're told it's 1,500 meters. So that's going to be multiplied then with 1,500 meters. And so if you work this out, We'll need to just remove this work done by the skier calculation. If we work this out, it comes out at 19,500 joules. Okay, And you can see that this is greater than what we had for the loss in mechanical energy. So the work done by the skier has got to be the difference then between the two energy values here. So in other words, it's going to be the 19,500 joules minus the 16,445 joules. Work that out and you end up with 3,055 joules. That's the input that the skier has got to put in in order to keep the balance, this loss of energy. Okay? So I hope that's given you some idea then on how to tackle problems like this using the work energy principle.